Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd give you a quick preview of what my wall looks like. I've been asked by a couple of people to just show you what holds I have on and, and circuits and things like that. So I'll start off, we'll just get straight into it. Uh, the first circuit we have are the hinge circuits. Uh, these are door hinges and we just knock the pins out. So we've got quite a different, an array of different hinges that we use. Uh, this idea, my dad came up with this idea. So you get a very, a very small hole to place your pick into. So it's quite good when you're fatigued to practice your placements. So we've got quite a few of these here. You see all the little, little white holes. And then I usually do that to warm up on, obviously after um, an aerobic warm up. I do a couple of circuits of these just to get going. Um, and then next, we have, we'll go for these, we like to call them bridge holds. I'm not sure what the technical word is for them. Um, so they're flat metal back. Then we have a metal plate coming out of them and we have some different holds. If you see, they're not overly, they're not overly thick. So the hold placement is slightly sketchy, especially on things like this, when they've put an angle, so you have to sort of gas on into them. So we use those and make a, a good circuit out of them. We used to have a volume here as well, but we took that down with uh, using some of the sketchy holds, which I'm going to show you. And then next we have these ball holds. Um, so they're a metal back with a small ball put on. And I'll just get an axe and I'll just show you how you can either use them front on. So we've screwed some uh, some holes in the top of that just to then I've got a bit of a start or if I want to just make it a bit easier and they're not very deep as you can tell but they're quite fun to take on as a side hold which you'll see in the video later on and then what else have we got we've got some of these I like to call them button holds these are quite deep and quite secure so they're not too bad to, to use and they're quite fun in a circuit to get some dynamic moves on. Then we have these holes here, as you can tell, torques. Um, and they're attached by a bolt as well, so to make sure they don't rip off. All of them have screws in, all these holes that I've shown you. Um, and then I've got another, another one here and you just leave her off like that. We've got some rock holds. We made these ourselves, just drilled a hold through and then attach the screw like so. It probably, if you were on the heavier side, you'd probably need to put another, another screw in. Uh, they are a little bit wobbly, but they are a bit wobbly, but you do get some, some fun holds. From just making up some even from rock that you find and then last but very not least these holds we got um i think they're from check so the check holds they're made of granite granite holds and they're super sketchy we recently got these I fell off quite a bit on these ones um and they're into a resin Resin plate. I'll just show you some of them. So, try not to talk too much on on these ones. Try and just pull straight down. But yeah, very very sketchy. Very very fun. Good competition preparation. I feel. Just show you. This one's probably my favourite one out of all of these granite holds, just because you can get a bit of leverage on this side hold. And then I think we're done. I'm trying to. We've got a couple of sort of steins and things. And um, oh, this one side holds a bit of a hook. And obviously we've got some red, some normal resin holds. Um, but yeah. So the the early ones I showed you are specifically for dry tooling. We have got some other holds which you could probably use for rock climbing. Um, and it's all just about experimenting with the different holds. So I'll just show you guys 
some example circuits. Just get it set up. So we'll just start off with these hinge holds, what a typical circuit looks like. Obviously really good for accuracy, especially when fatigued. Warm up, I'd probably do about four of these constantly, but just for the video's sake, I'll just move on to the next one. So then I'd probably go on with these with these uh, bridge holds. I've made two different circuits for them, so I'll just demo those and show you how those work. I'd like to do quite a lot of circuits on these ones just to get the mileage up. And when I'm doing minutes on and minutes off, such as six minutes on, six minutes off which emulates competition a bit more. Um, so then I'll do six minutes on these holds or just any holds, but it, it really gets a pump up, pump up if you start off at like three minutes on three minutes off, if you're just like a beginner at dry tooling and want to get some endurance strength up and then leave that up to, um, like you could even probably go up to, I don't know, as, as far as you wanted to go. I usually go up to about 12 minutes when I'm working up to it during training. And obviously you do your sets based on how long you're doing it. So obviously if you're doing a 12 minutes on, 12 minutes off, you're not gonna do 30 of those. You're gonna probably scale it down to maybe five. And then if you're doing three minutes on, three minutes off, you'd probably do, I don't know, you could probably try doing 10 uh, and just work it up to what you're trying to, what system you're trying to um, target. If you wanted to target in German system, so your aerobic system, you just have to figure it out from there. So I'll show you some of these bridge holds. So this first one is a bit of a longer circuit. It's this blue circuit. And I, I've only used nail polish on these, just so I can, if I ever need to reset, I can just do it from there and just wipe the nail polish off quite easily. It's also quite good if you get um, your hold set up on the wall, if you set up quite a few, so then you can practice uh, swapping your axe in your mouth and things to practice the efficiency. red one which is a bit trickier. There is that one. Just check. Um, so I'd either do a do laps on those ones after the hinge circuits. The next one I'm going to show you are these ball ones. Um, on these ones, I like to side hook them or even place my, my, front, uh, my pick on the front like this and then the slightest lean back then hooks it into place I'll, I'll show you so we'll do this one so we'll place the axe in and leave it back ever so slightly and it is slightly sketchy and you obviously you don't want to be wobbling around so a lot of this is 
your body tension and trying to stay static and hold and trying to just keep the core tight. So I'll just set you back. demonstrate these ones. So, as I said before, I either go in this little divot here or start from the side. So today I'll start from here. This is my first circuit on here. And as you can tell, you just need to keep a lot of body tension on these sorts of holds. Be very precise and make sure your picks are sharp. <laughs> I use Petzl Pure Dry Perks and I only titivate them slightly when I find it, I find them really really good for aggressive and precise things such as this. I do, I'd probably do that, that circuit later on in the, the session just because obviously it requires a lot of warming up because a lot of those moves are, are strenuous and I'd like to just mention that the wall here is the only wall I can train on um, apart from competitions and things um, this is the wall that's got me training up for uh, world competitions and, and coming third in the, the youth championships twice uh, so this wall is set up for me to specifically train on for dry tooling um, and that's because that's my main sport that's all I'm interested in it doing and trying to find holds to make sure it's competition style is, is quite tricky but we've managed to to figure some out um, obviously dry tooling uh, it's not allowed at climbing walls, most of them, because sometimes it can damage the wall from your ice axes um, if if not taken carefully. Uh, so yeah, so this is what I train on. Apart from outdoor venues, I have nowhere else to train in the UK. Uh, unlike some of the countries, they have some really amazing structures, such as Russia. They have some really good structures. Right. I'll show you these other holds. I can't promise I won't fall off. But, interesting. So I've tried to make a circuit using every hold, but that green one, I still need to include that one in. So I'll just show you what I've got so far, playing around on this.
yeah. So they are most of the circuits that I use to train on. Um, and the holds and power specifically. I like to do the circuits. Obviously, in some training sessions, I might do um, plus one, you know, changing up circuits or even using a stick and getting someone to point out different holds uh, to make it more dynamic or make the two bigger moves. So this is all I've used to get up to the climbing grades that I have and I'm currently using it to train for the M11 that I'm trying quick release which is on the previous video so give that give that a watch if you're interested in, in looking at how dry tooling outdoors happens. Um, and if you're interested in dry tooling, um, check out Chalk Block, Chalk Block website, um, where I've written two articles, one on how to get into dry tooling and just explaining it a bit more so you understand why I use ice axes and crampons and, and things like that and uh, what competitions are available. And then the second, uh, the second article I've, I've wrote on there has been about uh, training aids. Uh, called Mantis Tools, which can be used at indoor climbing walls, obviously with the permission of the climbing wall. Uh, so that's it for the video. If you want to like and subscribe, feel free to do so. And if you like this sort of video and want to know more about the training, sort of training I'm doing, please leave a comment and I shall either reply to you or I'll get sorted on another video. Thank you very much.